the start. He got the car right onto the grass with the left-hand wheels, but as you can see, it's Senna leading the two Williams Hondas together up into the right-hander of Druids. Somebody off on the outside of Druids. One of the Williamses, he's recovered. Now, Ayrton Senna is on three C compound tyres and one B. Now, that is very interesting because the C compound Goodyear tyre has, has the lead changes momentarily and off spins Rosberg and into him goes Nelson Piquet. On this, the seventh lap, Rosberg trying to take centre goes off. Piquet has stalled. Will he be able to restart his car? And we've now got a new third-place man because Mansell is up there. As into the pits comes Keki Rosberg. This is a sensationally exciting Grand Prix of Europe as Keki Rosberg on lap eight, having made contact with Nelson Piquet, who is out of the race, stops at the pits for a new left rear. Are they going to change the right as well? They're taking a long, long time, an unconscionably long time to get that left rear on and the wheel nut done up. And it looks to me as though there's a problem at the front of the car, but away he goes after a very long pit stop by today's standards. Because in practicing, they were doing it in just over eight seconds this morning, and Rosberg is right down the field. Now, on lap eight, it is still Senna in the lead, and behind him is Stefan Johansson. And in fact, uh, Rosberg has lost pretty much exactly a lap. That's him on a cold tyre in front of the leaders, Senna and Nigel Mansell in second place. Well, look at this. A terrific scrap for the leader. There's a change because the Williams has gone past Ayrton Senna, who has therefore lost the lead, and he has lost it to Nigel Mansell. Yes, Mansell took advantage of uh, his teammate, Keki Rosberg, holding up Ayrton Senna. He was slow because of the cold tyres. He's letting them both go now. Maybe he'll cut. Yes, Rosberg's angry with Senna. There's no doubt about that. He, I think Rosberg feels that Senna shut the door on him pretty fiercely in that incident just a couple of laps ago, and so he's going to hold Senna up. Now, uh, the feelings run quite high amongst the drivers in a situation like this, and I should think the Senna and Rosberg are both very angry with each other, so let's just watch and see if we get any fireworks from it. I can see a crowd in grandstand watching Nigel Mansell coming through to complete another lap in the lead. Rosberg, who you see behind him, is, is in front of him, I'm sorry, there is Mansell, is actually nearly a full lap behind the race leader, Nigel Mansell, in view of the fact that he, Rosberg, had to come into the pits and change that left rear after hitting Nelson Piquet, who's out of the race. And it's lap 13 now. Mansell leads. Yes, I can't quite work out what's going on in Senna's car because he dropped back quite sharply from Nigel Mansell when Mansell got past the courtesy of teammate Keke Rosberg. But he's now catching again. So I, I initially thought that maybe his tyres were giving him some trouble. He got them a little bit hot in the early laps, but uh, he seems to have steadied down and is actually catching them. Still 61 laps to go for this man, the race leader, Nigel Mansell. The highest he has ever finished in a Grand Prix was in Belgium, where he finished second. And he's a changed man since he joined the Williams Honda team. And as you see, Nigel Mansell is nearly 10 seconds ahead of Helio De Angel of uh, Senna, who is three seconds ahead of De Angelis, who's got Sura right behind him, and then Johansson and Lafitte are only about six seconds behind Sura, with, of course, Lafitte now up to fifth place, and there he is. The man from Port Erin, this is his 72nd Grand Prix. One second place, five third places, three fourth places. One pole position, 51 points, seven times a car champion. Then up the racing ladder through Formula 3, Formula 2 driving the Rolt Honda. Then into Formula 1 for four years under the leadership of Colin Chapman with the JPS Lotus team. This year to the Williams Honda team. And as I said earlier on, he is like a new man. And look at him go. Mansell, Williams Honda, Senna, JPS Lotus, 
Sura, Brabham BMW, Lafitte, Ligier. And Sura and Lafitte are on Pirelli. Mansell and Senna are on Goodyear. There is Sura. De Angelis, both the JPS Lotus is still in the first six. Yes, and um, particularly Mansell's lead. He seems to be holding Sura. I had thought that Sura would start to catch him. But in fact, if anything, I think it's the Pirelli tired cars that seem to be in trouble. The feet has dropped back a bit after his charge. You remember we were looking at his tyres and uh, they did and there is Father Mansell. Looks very happy indeed. And uh, why shouldn't he be with uh, young Nigel out there doing a very competent job indeed. And he's going through now to complete his 48th lap out of 75. I hardly dare say it, but his Williams Honda running like a train. And Mansell, who led two Grand Prix in the JPS Lotus team last year at uh, Monaco and Dallas, went off at Monaco and was castigated by a lot of people for not being able to withstand the pressure. Although, to be more than fair to Nigel, we have to recall that the weather conditions last year at Monza in the rain were absolutely appalling. And he made that now famous remark of I hit a bit of white and went off, which was a masterpiece of understatement. But now Nigel Mansell on lap 49 has been in the lead since lap 9. He's led this race for 40 laps. He's never done that before. So up front, Mansell is holding his gap with Mark Scherer, but it's bouncing about a bit. At the moment, it's some 15 seconds. Uh, it was a bit more a few minutes ago, and it's got a bit less, but uh, I strongly suspect that they're now, or particularly Nigel Mansell, is turning his boost down or trying to adjust his speed to Mark Scherer to keep his lead comfortable without, of course, overdoing his use of fuel. And that's a bit of a good sight. And it's Mark Sura who is second. That's the second of the Brabham's. PK went out much earlier, of course. And now the BMW or the turbo has blown. And this is fire extinguisher time. And it's out of the car time for Mark Sura, who was second. So back in second position is Senna. Up to third place goes Prost. In fourth position now, it's De Angelis catching Prost. In fifth position now, it's Rosberg. A wonderful drive. This has certainly not been a case of a lucky win. He's dominated the race since he thrust his way through on lap nine into the lead. And now he comes out of clearways and takes the chequered flag. And Nigel Mansell has won the Shell Oils Grand Prix of Europe. He is exultant. He is exuberant. And he's got every justification to be. I must admit that I have been looking forward to saying this for a long time. And here is Ayrton Senna finishing in second place. There is Nigel Mansell and there is the roar. He's done it, I can tell from the expression on Nigel's face that he's tired. He was going to have to have two pain-killing injections to help him overcome the chest pains that he was having from those torn muscles after fighting the car to a standstill when his steering wheel broke in practice for the Belgian Grand Prix two weeks ago. Keki Rosberg, world champion of 1982, and Frank Williams, there's the smiling Frank Williams, who's now seen yet another driver join men like Alan Jones, Carlos Reutemann, and Keki Rosberg as Grand Prix winners, and he congratulates the new world champion, Alain Prost. Away goes the champagne, which I always think is a charm. <laughs> I take that, Alain Prost. <laughs> That's for being world champion. And that is a very good place not to be after a race, I can tell you. Ayrton Senna's got a face for and he's stinging his eyes. Prost, the world champion. Nigel Mansell, the race winner, the two top men of the race.